Welcome to Obesity Explained, my new video series where we're going to talk about the actual root causes of obesity using only the most up-to-date science. Episode 1, The Loop, featuring the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. In this series, you're going to learn how all of these things affect obesity that you've probably heard about. Uh, the gut microbiome, you've probably heard your gut bacteria can affect uh, your metabolic health. Check. It's in there. Dietary fat, whether you eat polyunsaturated fats, monounsaturated fats, saturated fat. How does that affect your health? It's in there. Environmental obesogens. These are persistent organic pollutants that, that stick around in our drinking water. They're in the air. Sometimes they're in foods like beef. Check. It's in there. Disrupted sleep. Torpor. Um, if you upset your circadian rhythms, how does that affect your metabolic health? Check. It's in there. And we're going to follow the money. This is a table of late stage trials that pharmaceutical companies are actively doing, spending tens of millions of dollars on to try to combat fatty liver disease, which affects 35 to 40% of Americans and is a relatively simple thing for them to get drugs approved for. Um, and we're going to look at how are they spending their money because that might give us some hints, right? So what is the loop? The loop comes from this 2018 paper um, it, that was in the journal Nature, which is obviously a widely respected journal. And the question that I've had is what triggers fat metabolism when you eat? And this paper answers that question. So when you eat, you can see there's a sort of a lizard human up in the upper left hand corner. Uh, I apologize for my art skills. Uh, it's eating what appears to be some type of squash, perhaps, and it's releasing insulin. And what that insulin does is it activates the aryl hydrocarbon receptor in the liver. Also, when you eat, bile is released. It goes into the small intestine and it helps to absorb the nutrients from your food. Uh, as more time passes, the bile moves through your small intestine and 95% of it actually is reabsorbed by the ileum, which is part of your intestine, and it starts making its way back towards the liver via the portal vein. Now, in this time, uh, one to two hours after you eat, the era hydrocarbon receptor is running unfettered and unchecked, doing its thing. And what does the era hydrocarbon receptor do? It is a transcription factor. It turns on other genes. It is a gene that turns on other genes. As time passes, the bile acids make their way uh, and they stimulate something in the liver called the FXR, which in turn releases something called FGF19, which activates another thing called SHIP, which is aka small heterodimer partner, but I'll probably just call it SHIP. And that SHIP directly binds to era hydrocarbon receptor and prevents it from producing other genes, from activating other genes. And so this is a feedback loop that is turning off the era hydrocarbon receptor after you eat the bile ultimately returns to the gallbladder where it is stored until you eat again. And so that is the loop, this feedback mechanism of activating insulin or activating the era hydrocarbon receptor after meal via insulin and bile acid signaling, shutting it back off. So this is a chart. This is also from that paper, the era hydrocarbon receptor you can see rises steadily for about two hours after a meal and then stays relatively high for a while ship is also rises after a meal but there's a time lag of maybe an hour or two until the ship starts to rise because it has to wait for the bile acid to come back and trigger the fxr pemt is a target gene of the era hydrocarbon receptor ahr upregulates genes involved in single carbon metabolism, and that means methyl groups. And so one of the things AHR does after a meal is it drains your liver of methyl groups. And so you can see the PEMT, the target gene of the AHR, initially rises in response to the AHR being activated, but then as, uh, as SHIP steadily rises after a meal, the PEMT goes back down so that by four hours after the meal, the PEMT is back to baseline level. And so the AHR really only is doing its thing for two or three hours directly after a meal. And this is, uh, this is actual walking around humans. 
the first five columns are normal humans. The second five columns on the right, the ones that I've underlined where it says steatosis patients, those are people with fatty liver disease. And that red circle, that is the amount of activated ship that these patients have. And so you can see that they don't have this feedback loop of ship turning off the era hydrocarbon receptor. Uh, the people that's underlined in red with the darker bands, that's the amount of activated ship that normal people have compared to people with liver disease. Uh, the yellow circle, those dark bands, that means that people with liver steatosis, they make tons of the ARI hydrocarbon receptor. And in normal people, they make way less. So as you can see, the feedback loop that is shutting off the ARI hydrocarbon receptor is lost in fatty liver disease. So what does the ARAL hydrocarbon receptor do exactly that causes all of these changes? Well, it is the master controller of fat metabolism. Uh, PPAR alpha, you can see there on the lower left, was traditionally known as the master regulator of fat metabolism, but the era, but it's actually a direct target of the era hydrocarbon receptor. So the era hydrocarbon receptor controls PPAR alpha. It also controls a gene called CYP1B1. That's the thug in the middle. CYP1B1 oxidizes polyunsaturated fats, among other things. And those oxidized polyunsaturated fats, such as 12 heat, activate PPAR gamma, which is the other master regulator of fat metabolism. And so the AHR is the puppet master uh, controlling fat metabolism. It came to my attention originally because of this graph. This is a paper by the Craig Tomlinson group. Uh, they they put mice, uh, two groups of mice on a high fat diet, a design, designed to fatten them up uh, for 10 weeks. And then they gave them this drug, which is an inhibitor of the era hydrocarbon receptor. And you can see that in literally one week, between weeks 10 and 11, those mice completely have reversed obesity. They, they instantly return to their normal weight once the activity of the era hydrocarbon receptor is gone. How does it do this? It activates something called TIPARP. TIPARP directly, uh, uses NAD plus. And so it lowers your levels of NAD plus and it increases your NADH to NAD plus ratio. That's called reductive stress. If you read my blog or watch old videos, I have a whole bunch of stuff about reductive stress. This is how the era hydrocarbon receptor gets you there. Also TI PARP directly upregulates something called the liver X receptor, the liver X receptor upregulates something called SREB P1C and SREB P1C is the direct activator of lipogenic enzymes. And so TI PARP is activating lipogenesis, um, when stimulated by the ARI hydrocarbon receptor. AHR also downregulates AMP kinase by activating something called microRNA 802. AMP kinase, actually shuts off lipogenesis um, and it encourages you to oxidize, to burn your fat rather than storing it. And the AHR turns off AMP kinase. The other thing that it does is it upregulates something called CD36. CD36 is vastly upregulated in obese and diabetic humans. It, it basically takes fat up into the cells. So in obesity and in diabetes, your fat cells and your liver cells have a lot of the CD36 and you're just constantly sucking fat up into your cells. It also upregulates PDK4. PDK4 blocks pyruvate dehydrogenase, which allows you to oxidize glucose. And so uh, when PDK4 is high, you can't burn glucose. And if your NAD plus is low, lipogenic enzymes are high and you can't burn the glucose guess what? You're going to make it into fat. And so the AHR is setting up this environment that welcomes storing fat rather than burning fat. Why does the AHR have a stupid name? You might wonder. Um, this is a compound called TCDD. This is a common organic pollutant. Um, and we, we've, first discovered the ARA hydrocarbon receptor because people who worked in factories that made this TCDD were getting a wasting disease. So ARA hydrocarbon receptor, when it's crazy, crazy stimulated, also can cause you to waste away because it's so involved in all these pathways involving energy storage. Um, the ARIL means is because this TCD has rings, 
right? So aryl means rings. Um, it's hydrocarbon because it's mostly made out of hydrogen and carbon, and it's a receptor because receptors are things that recognize things like toxins and then respond accordingly. And so uh, what TCDD does when the era hydrocarbon receptor is stimulated from an environmental toxin, an environmental obesogen, it is it breaks out of that little window that of two to three hours postprandially where it's, you know, we keep it in this cage, right? Ship keeps AHR in its cage by bile acid signaling, shutting it down after a meal. And you can see the, uh, the TCDD is on the keychain there. It's the thing that can unleash the a hydrocarbon receptor. If you eat enough of activators of the era hydrocarbon receptor it no longer has to live in that window so you can see here the little era hydrocarbon receptor he's now bound to this tcdd and now the era hydrocarbon receptor is in control and it burns down this whole loop that's repressing it um it starts by getting rid of the enzyme cytochrome P457B1, which is involved in bile acid production. And it changes which types of bile acids are produced. And it actually lowers the ones that activate FXR. Another thing that it does is it redu- it reduces the proteins that actually take bile acids up into the liver. So less bile acids are taken into the liver and they're different kinds of bile acids. And that blocks this FXR signaling. And now FXR is no longer able to activate ship via FGF 19. And that is the only feedback system in the body powerful enough to shut down the a hydrocarbon receptor. Next, the a hydrocarbon receptor goes after your gut microbiome, slashing the diversity in your gut microbiome and favoring uh, bacteria that make something called bile salt hydrolase. And guess what? Bile salt hydrolase is also involved in bile acid metabolism. And so on several levels, the era hydrocarbon receptor is going after your bile acid metabolism. Lastly, the era hydrocarbon receptor increases in adipose tissue, an enzyme called IDO1. And IDO1 is involved in tryptophan metabolism, and it converts tryptophan into something called kinurinine. Um, kinurinine is interesting because it is something that we make in our own bodies. It's an endogenous activator of the era hydrocarbon receptor. And so you don't have to be poisoned by TCDD to activate the era hydrocarbon receptor. You can do it with kinurinine, which you can make in your own cells if you activate IDO1. And of course, the era hydrocarbon receptor itself activates IDO1. And so in this final state, the era hydrocarbon receptor is free to do its thing all of the time because there's no feedback loop from bile acid signaling and the fat cells are constantly making kinurinine, which keeps it activated all of the time. Um, Is this relevant in humans? This is a 2015 paper. Here's the era hydrocarbon receptor. It is activating IDO1 in these humans. The two black bars, these are lean humans. The two gray bars are obese humans, and this is two different types of fat. And so you can see the lean humans have low level, low activity levels of IDO1 because the era hydrocarbon receptor is being kept in check. And the obese humans, IDO1 is massively upregulated. And when IDO1 is massively upregulated, we make more kinurinine. And so you can see the obese humans have significantly more kinurinine than the lean humans. And what does the kinurinine do? Of course, it activates the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. And you can see this is a positive feedback loop that just keeps running. Okay, 2022 paper pretty much shows the same thing. This one goes into more detail. You can see there's a positive relationship between BMI and IDO1 levels. You can see the obese humans have much more IDO1 in their adipose tissues. Uh, IDO1 causes those obese humans to have more kinurinine. You can see the direct relationship between BMI and the amount of kinurinine. The kinurinine, of course, activates the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. Uh, Again, you see the positive feedback loop uh, in a 2022 Nature paper. Also, this is an Egyptian study that looked at the amounts of AHR 
in obese children, and you can see the obese children make way more AHR than do the lean children. Uh, this is a paper about dioxin toxicity, and so uh, humans who have been who have uh, a significant amount of this dioxin in their fat tissue are much more likely to be obese. Uh, this is a study in mice. Uh, they fed kenurinine to mice. And even this is a controlled diet. These are mice on a, on a very low fat diet that classically would keep mice lean. Uh, they're not as fat as mice on the quote unquote Western diet, but they still are significantly fatter. And you can see, especially they have a lot of subcutaneous adipose tissue. So if you feed the mice kenurinine, which activates the AHR, you have more fat tissue, and this is SCD1 down here. The kenurinine upregulates levels of lipogenic enzymes. That's what it does. And you also have dysregulated blood glucose. The uh, AHR makes you insulin resistant. Uh, finally, one more study. These is mice. These uh, these mice. Uh, this yellow line. Uh, they were given small amounts of TCDD while they were pregnant. Then uh, for eight weeks, they were maintained on a normal chow diet. They don't get fat. But as soon as you switch them onto a diet that causes fat, they rapidly gain weight compared to mice who have not ever been exposed to TCDD. So you can see there, AHR activation makes you incredibly prone to weight gain when you eat the wrong thing. And you can see that those mice are actually eating less calories than the other mice. So this is a case of less calories, more fatter due to the aryl hydrocarbon receptor. Now, I just want to go again. I said we were going to follow the money. Well, look at the drugs that the pharmaceutical industry is investing in to deal with fatty liver disease. FXR agonism. We saw that. What does FXR do? It shuts down the era hydrocarbon receptor in the liver. FGF19, what does that do? Oh, right. It shuts down the era hydrocarbon receptor in the liver. Um, these other things, PPARs, the era hydrocarbon receptor is the thing that controls the PPARs. Um, ACC and SCD1, those are enzymes that are lipogenic enzymes that are upregulated by the AHR. And you saw in that last slide, that AHR does indeed activate SCD1 and the other lipogenic genes via uh, the LXR, via TI PARP. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, hopefully I've convinced you that the aryl hydrocarbon receptor is incredibly important to whether or not you are obese. Um, coming up, the next episode, we're going to talk about poo or tea. We're going to talk about its effects and bile acids. Is or T, the kryptonite to the era hydrocarbon receptor. I've got a fun video. We're going to look at the difference between lean and fat twins, identical twins raised in the same household and what their levels of PARP are. That's very interesting. We're going to look at linoleic acid, how cytochrome P uh, 451 B1 affects torpor, affects your metabolism. When you eat linoleic acid, uh, come back soon. It's going to be a fun series. Uh, and I hope you enjoy it.